Hello everybody, I'm the Display Lady and welcome or welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be all about job applications. It's that time of year now where they're all going to start popping up on eTeach and the tests and all of those other places. So I thought I would film this video to help you with your application process. Just a quick one before we start to remind you to like and subscribe to the channel if this is the sort of videos you want to be seeing. Leave me a comment below if there's anything in particular that you want to see next or any questions you've got about anything I say in this video or anything at all. I'll try my best to respond to all of them. Thank you. So I'm going to film a lot of this video with a voiceover. I'm going to show you my phone. I'm going to show you some live current job applications. I'm going to talk about general things that are on most of the job applications and what you need to do to address these in that per all important personal statement. One thing to say before we start is when I was an NQT and I was applying for jobs, it took me a long time to even get an interview. So I do know that this process is long and arduous and just takes up a lot of time that you don't really have uh, when you're a trainee teacher or even just a general teacher. I think I wrote, must have been about 25 plus personal statements to try and get this perfect and eventually it did work. And ever since then, any job that I've applied for with that personal statement or a variation of that personal statement has got me an interview and ultimately a job. So I feel like I've really refined that process now so I can pass along those skills to you guys. My first tip on preparing your personal statement is to sort of come up with a generic personal statement that covers chronologically everything that you have done that could be applied to teaching. Um, we're going to look at the criteria for a lot of jobs and what sort of things you're going to put in your generic kind of personal statement, but you want to keep this organised. Um, I would suggest chronologically is best and you're going to want to have certain things within there that you are just going to adapt and tweak to match the school that you're applying for. This is going to save you a lot of time in the long run. Also, it's going to save you time if you ever decide to apply for another job elsewhere because you've already got that kind of backbone and structure and you can just add on to the bottom any extra experience you've gained um, in your job that you've just left. Um, another tip that I would have is that keep this to around a page or a page and a half at the top maximum because otherwise the school's not really going to read it and you really do want them to read it because this is the bit where you've got to sell yourself which a lot of teachers do find really difficult to do. So you've got to try and sell yourself as best as you possibly can, try and think persuasive writing. My second tip is going to be to really look at that first page where the school job application is and I'll show you what I mean um, in a minute and really look at what the school are wanting and really look at what sort of school it is, what are they really prioritising at the moment, is it that they've really got a high priority on technologies or art or ICT and really try and sell that and get that to come across in your application that you've noticed that that's what they're interested in and so are you. You need to match yourself to that school and say this is why you need me. Uh, tip number three, on a lot of the um, adverts for jobs you are going to see the same sorts of things again and you are going to see visits to schools are warmly welcomed or visits to schools are strongly encouraged on most of them i've never gotten a job where i've not visited the school first so i would really try and prioritize that <clears throat> i know that that's a super difficult thing to do if you're a full-time teacher i've used my ppa time to do this before so you just really need to prioritize that and think about the fact that that's going to sell you to the school. You're going to look like you care about that school. It's not just another job application you're rattling off in a long list of them. You're going to look like you're proactive. You're going to look like you care. And it's your first opportunity, actually, to sell yourself to the school and make yourself memorable so that when your job application lands, they say, oh, I remember him or her. She was amazing. She said this, she did that. She's visited our school. And that's going to stand you above the pack before you even get started. My fourth tip before we get into looking at specific job applications is to sell yourself in your first sentence. So don't have a sentence that's kind of generic and boring. I actually start with a, an anecdote about why I wanted to become a teacher or I did when I was an NQT. Um, so that's always a nice way to start. Try and do something a bit different so it catches the school's attention. I don't mean different as in wacky and wild. I just mean different as in it's gonna make you stand out. So here we are on eTeach. I found a job for Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2 teachers, so there's something for everybody. 
Um, we've got a little bit about the school here where we can see their Ofsted was good. We need to look at that Ofsted report as well because that might help us with things we could bring to the job. A little bit about what they offer and then what they are looking for. We can see motivated, enthusiastic people, skills organised, all the usual stuff. And we can also see a healthy schools, so that might be something we want to comment on. Uh, scrolling further down, we can see visits are warmly encouraged. So that's what I was talking about before, where you need to go and visit the school to stand you in good. So just clicking on the extra documentation at the bottom, you've got this bit of information about what the school's looking for. Um, they're always going to mention something about the curriculum. So you just need to be putting on there that you've got recent experience. So that'll either be through your teaching practice or in your current job. Um, it does mention subject leading. Uh, even if you are an NQT, I would still mention what subjects you're passionate about. Um, and I would make sure on my school visit, I would be asking about what areas of leadership in subjects that they require so that I could maybe match that and also decide whether that's going to be for me or not. Um, other things it mentions here is... Uh, how you're planning and supporting your SEN and more able children. Most schools are going to have SEN children, more able children. So I would just be mentioning what you are currently doing to support them, extend and challenge. This one specifically mentions English as an additional language. So what experience have you got with that, if any? If you haven't got any, say that you're passionate about supporting that and what you're sort of going to do about that. Um, because that's specifically mentioned, so that's really interesting. Um, also says about targets and reporting to parents, so I would just do that through a quick example. So when we scroll down, the next thing we see is about home learning. Uh, make sure you've put this in your current section. What are you doing? What is the purpose of homework? Making sure you're saying it's linked to classwork, because that's clearly what they want. Um, the next bit is about engagement in your class and your teaching strategies. So I would link that to maybe saying about current observations and maybe your questioning was a strength and you're targeting specific children with that as an assessment for learning technique. Um, you're always going to get stuff about a safe environment. Make sure you mention that you're passionate about creating that and why that's important. Behaviours on there, so mention that you're following the school's behaviour policy. Uh, maybe look into what the school's behaviour policy is and say why you may support that. If you don't support that, then question whether this is the right school to apply for. Um, it says about personal development, so you could link that to the behaviour management and say what research you have done, who you think is really important in behaviour right now, for example. Um, development plan, make sure you've had a look at that. It's specifically mentioned here, so how can you contribute to that? Uh, and the last thing is about collaboration, so that's kind of an obvious one that you're doing it right now, so just say that you are. Here's another job application I found on eTeach, it's very similar to the other one. Um, it mentions specifically about flexibility and being willing to adapt. So that's something I might tweak for this job application. Again, we've got visits to the school are strongly encouraged, so definitely useful for your application. Make sure you do this. Uh, I'm just going to scroll to the bottom and click on the job description. Uh, on this one, we can see, again, I'll zoom in, um, organisation, all the same sorts of things, teaching and reviewing lessons, definitely give an example. You might want to link that to assessment to give both of them in one. Um, it says specifically about resources on this one, so ICT or practical resources would be good to mention. And it also mentions behaviour on this one, which you will have already got. So this is why one generic one can be really useful and you can just add and tweak bits to it, specifically to bits you see in the school. So I'm just going to click on the teacher specification part and this is what most of them will look like. It's more, more of like a grid method with essential um, down the left and desirable down the right. And I would definitely just use this as a tick grid. Um, when I'm doing my application, make sure I'm covering all the things, especially that essential column, because that is what the employees will do when they're looking at your application. They will take that grid and they will just tick it. Um, it says on there that as an NQT, I would suggest you do a club because that's in the desirable section. It'll give you a tick in that box. I know it's a lot to do on top of everything else as an NQT, but I would really recommend trying to do that, especially in your second block placement. Um... Schools mentioned to commitment in wider schools life in most job applications. So it's a good one that you can put on all of your applications. Um, it mentions effective leader, which doesn't necessarily have to come from leading a specific subject. You could bring in your previous experience before you went into teaching in that, um, to meet that criteria. 
Um, it also has a lot of other things in there about punctuality and stuff like that, which doesn't necessarily need to be in your personal statement. They will get that from your references and other places. So don't worry about ticking every single box, especially ones that are going to come in the actual application part. That's it for this video. If there's anything you think I've missed or anything extra that you want to ask, please do leave a comment below. And do remember to like and subscribe. It really helps me out knowing what you guys are interested in and what you're finding helpful and useful because that's why I'm doing these videos after all. Um, have a good day. Bye.